Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I need to come back to God's anointing. I need to come back to God's anointing. I need his anointing. I, I need, listen. A symbol of, of, of God's anointing, or let me reverse it. The Holy Spirit is a symbol of oil. And when I say we need to come back to God's anointing, we need to come back to the verse where Jesus speaks to his disciples. And he says this to him in Luke chapter 4. He says, the spirit of the Lord is on me. Everybody say that with me. The spirit of the Lord is on me. Look. Why? Because he has anointed me. He has anointed me. In other words, God pours his oil over us for a purpose. He says, he's anointed me to preach good news. To preach, see, God wants to put an anointing in you and on you so that when you hit those places of the Red Seas that come before you, you're so anointed that you can speak good news to bad news. And good news will always overpower and overcome whatever bad news is coming your way. But it takes a person that that not only has faith, it takes a person that understands their anointing. In other words, God has anointed us to speak. He said to the disciples, man, why don't you speak to the storm? Why don't you tell that storm to cease? In other words, Jesus got ticked off because his disciples were crying and complaining about the situation. And Jesus was like, dude, where's your anointing in this situation? Where's your voice? Where, where's the winds stop, waves cease? He said, man, if you speak to that mountain and you speak with it with authority and with seed, that's just with, with seed of, 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 of mustard seed faith, he said, man, you can literally move mountains. And so we need to come back to that place of anointing that no matter how difficult the situation is, you're anointed by God to do something now. I want to take us just, just for maybe about 20 minutes through a, a simple message. But I want to come to the place of why is it that we lose the desire? Why is it that we lose the relationship with the anointing? Who's the anointing? The Holy Spirit. Why do we lose desire? Like why? Let's, let's be real. How connected are we to the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Because I think sometimes in our own mind, we think we are just because we believe in the Holy Spirit. But, but it's beyond just believing in the Holy Spirit. It's being in relationship with the Holy Spirit. But what happens to us, for, for some reason, we lose, we lose desire for relationship with this anointing that God wants to provide. Here's why. Look at this. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 16 through 18, it says this. He said, now this is God. This is the Israelites. Once again, let's keep talking about the Israelites. He bring, brings them out, and he's trying to take them to the promised land, right? And look what he does. He fed you manna in the wilderness, a substance. Everybody say substance. So, so God, God did something super in their natural substance. He said, I brought you manna from heaven. God was throwing down grub from heaven they were eating angels food they were literally eating from the table of God's kitchen God said I fed them manna from heaven and it was substance look which your fathers did not know so that he might humble you in other words all of those spiritual fathers they couldn't even explain it God wants you to get to the place where you, you don't have an answer for everything. All you have to say, but God. Like, how did that happen? It was God. 
see, that, that's, that's what I'm trying to get to that, that, that doctor today. I want her to get, get her from, from, from scientific, which is awesome by God, created by God, but to say, I don't understand it, but God. And so he says, so I humbled your fathers. You see, we'll keep reading. Watch. So that he might humble you by dependence on him. The church, Christians, believers, people, we're so independent, huh? But do you know that God wants you to be dependent of him? Like our dependence should be in him. Always. Do you know that God wants you to be dependent? Now, it's not healthy to be dependent of people because people are going to fail you. But, but God says, but I want you to have dependence. Your independence is your dependence on me. That's what you celebrate. We should celebrate every year. We're gonna, I'm going to create one. Staff, it's going to be a new holiday. We're going to call it Dependence Day. Wouldn't that be awesome? We, just, we could just do that. Look. And that he might test you. Everybody say, test me, Lord. Look, that he might test, test you to do good. To do what? Good. I have anointed you so that you can preach what? Good. Come on, so I'll test you so that you can do good things for you at the end. Otherwise, look at that. In other words, God's saying, hey, listen, if I didn't humble you to, 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 to the point where your fathers had no, they had no answers for you. They didn't even know how manna was falling from heaven. He says, but I'm doing that because if I don't do it this way, if I don't keep you in a place of need, I think, I think need is, 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 uh, is, is, is underrated. I, I really believe that God wants believers to be needy. He does. Well, I mean, you can't say be dependent of God, but then you're not needy. To be dependent of someone is because you need them. Right? And so look, he says, otherwise if you, if you weren't, if you didn't have dependence on me, here's what he says. You may say in your heart, my power and the strength of my hand made me this wealth. In other words, you're saying that everything you have, your gift, your talent, your, your accumulation of, of finances, properties, cars, whatever, if not careful, you can come to the place where, where you don't even need God anymore. Why? Because my security is in me, not in him. In other words, I have my own security. I got backup for my backup. And so God was like, I'm getting rid of your backup for your backup. And so he goes on to say, but you shall remember with profound respect the Lord your God. For it is he who is giving you power to make wealth that he may confirm his what? Relationship. That he may confirm his, 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 his covenant with you. Like God, God, God's just waiting for you to be so desperate, Anusha. Like so de like you don't need anything else but him when you come to that place of desperation you're going to watch and see how God is going to give you power to gain the wealth that you need I'm not talking just about money we can be we can be wealthy in relationships we can be wealthy in health we can be wealthy in wisdom we can be wealthy in counsel we can be wealthy in knowing the, the plan and the purpose of God where, where you're no longer just trying to live every day, trying to figure out life. I wonder what I'm here on this earth to do. But you're so wealthy that, man, I know without a shadow of a doubt why I'm here. But you've got to have dependence. I think we have too many independent Christians today. Can we just be real? We, we, we're always trying to figure it out. Well, if I just do this, if I do that, if I do... Now, listen, I'm not saying don't plan. I'm saying be dependent. Don't get it mixed up here. Don't go home and sit on your couch now. Well, I'm just going to depend on God. Praise God. <laughs> no. No. But you 
you shall remember the profound respect the Lord your God, for it is he who has given you power to make wealth, that he may confirm his covenant, that he may confirm his relationship. Let me give you a point real quick. God will go where there is a need. God will go where there is a need. God will go. If you're saying, well, how come I don't see God? Because you don't need him. You're too busy complaining. You don't need him. When you're complaining, you're full of, you're full of what? Yourself. So think about it. If you're always complaining, wah, 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 is that saying I need God? No, that's saying I'm so consumed with my own selfishness. I'm so self-absorbed with my own ideas. Why would you think that spells need? It doesn't. It spells you. So God's saying, hey, listen, I will go where there is a need. You, those of you that are going to dig a ditch, that's saying, I have a need. God's going to say, okay, they created me an altar. My ditch is my altar to God. Huh? God, this, is, this will be the place where you will do the impossible I'm creating a space for you I'm creating a, a gap that only you can fill yes okay so 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 here we have here we have the scripture God says so I did this on purpose to humble you guys to humble me so that you never forget that without me Man, you would, you would have starved in the wilderness. Right now, maybe you're in a dry place in life, but guess what? By the grace of God, you're here. It could be worse, but you're here. Look at two or three people and be like, man, it could have been worse. But you're sitting with me. Yeah. For example, for example, do you guys remember the story of the withered man? I've told this story plenty of times here at church. I, I love that story. It, it's spoken to me so many times in moments when, 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 I, when I lacked. And do you remember when he comes to the withered man and he says to him, what did he say to him? Stretch out your what? Hand. Okay. What, did, what was his issue? He had a withered hand. That's why it's called the story of the withered man, right? The withered hand. All right. <laughs> Just some open book insight. So, so he had... He had a withered hand, but check this out. So Jesus shows up on the scene. The guy, the guy is lacking. Okay, he's lacking something that he needed. Now, God says to him, stretch out your hand. Now, he could have stretched out his good hand. Because how can you stretch out a hand you don't have? Right? Right? So, so think, God will only meet the need that you're willing to give him. So he says, stretch out your hand. He stretched out the one where there was no hand. And there was a hand. And so many times God asks you and me to do things, but we do something other than what he's asking us for. It's like God saying, give up this. But we give up something else. Kind of like the fast. Well, I won't fast food, but I'll fast TV. You see how we begin? See, God will let you choose what withered hand he will heal. God will let you choose. He could have said, lift up your withered hand. He said, stretch out your hand. See, he gave him the power of choice. And so he stuck out the one that was with her. See, God needs to allow you to make a choice to heal your withered life. The question is, are you stretching out the withered one or are you stretching out the good one? Are, are you listening? And, and, and in church, we can be so putting out the wrong one. The same goes with the Holy Spirit. You can either choose 
to be in relationship with the Holy Spirit or not. The Holy Spirit's not going to make you guys. For those of you that you come here and you're just like, I don't I mean, we love the teaching, but ah, this Holy Spirit's a little bit too much. See, then you're not letting God, you're not choosing for God to heal the withered, and you finish the sentence, the withered heart, the withered mind, huh? the withered family, the withered finances, the with, you got to give God something. What, what are you willing to give to God? Let me take you to another verse. I'm almost done. Is this okay? So everybody say this. God goes where there's a need. So you know what that tells me? So if God goes where there's a need, then that means that God is not attracted to places that already are full and don't need him. See, God gets attracted by needs. Did you ever see Jesus go hang out in places where everything was good? No, I'll read all his story. Read the Bible. All new Everywhere he showed up, demon possessed, withered hand, blind Bartimaeus, right? Everywhere he went, uh, dead Lazarus, huh? Uh, but pastor, that, 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 did, so Jesus is only for sick people? No, Jesus is also for jacked up people. Remember that tax collector he went to go visit at his house? What was his name? Huh? Y'all read Bible? Zacchaeus, remember that? Okay, remember the dude? The guy was a robber. He was a thief. He was jacking everybody. And what does Jesus do? He goes and hangs out with a sinner of sinners. So check it out. He doesn't just go and heal. If you're like, well, I don't need God. Praise God. No, trust me. You're a sinner. You need him. Without him, you're going to hell. You need Jesus. Jesus is the door to heaven. He is the way. He is the truth. He, everyone needs God. That's why we need to get our dependence. The only way to walk in true dependence is to walk in true Holy Spirit. Because God said this. He said, I sealed you with my spirit. In other words, God says, man, you belong to me. Okay, now let's read a story real quick. 2 Kings 4, 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7. You guys comfortable? Look at this. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord. But now, look at, listen, bad things happen to good people too, okay? But check this out. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. And Elisha replied to her two things. He said, how can I help you? And number two, uh, tell me what you have in your house. He just boom, boom. How can I help you? And tell me what you got in your house. That's a pretty awkward question, huh? But when you're anointed, you know how to bring the right news. It's kind of stupid to say, what's in your house? A broom, a mop. What do you mean what's in my house? That's so stupid. That's the problem when you're here. See, this woman was desperate. She had a need. The question wasn't stupid to her. She knew the man of God was anointed. You better start learning how to reverence the anointing when God brings it to you. Because you just may miss out a blessing. It's called get the reverence back. Get the respect back of, of what God puts in your life. Respect the house of God. Respect the place that you call home. Don't treat it like whatever. It's God's house. This is your ditch. Every time you come in here, God fills you. Respect it. Honor it. So he says, what you got, girl? How can I help you, girl? And look what she says. She says, it's funny how she responds. She says, your servant has nothing there at all. She said, except a small jar of olive oil. I have nothing, but I do have something. I have nothing, but I have something. Man, I got nothing, but except I have a little jar of oil. In other words, she had a jar that wasn't empty. You know, I've heard this preached so many times, but they always think it's empty. No, there was a little bit of oil. See, God knows there's a little bit of you left right now that you can still bring him. Maybe you've been so spent in life, but guess what? But you're still alive, so there's still some of you left. Maybe you've been so far out, so far away from God, so disconnected with God, but guess what? Because you're sitting here tonight, there's still a little bit of you left. And God says, bring me what you got, girl. Come on, homie, bring me what you got. 
What you got? I got a 40 of oil. You're laughing because you're a heathen. That's why you're laughing. You know, you're laughing. You're laughing like, you know. I knew that. I did that to test you. I was waiting for silence. Yeah. She said, look, she said, she says, I have nothing. I have nothing kind of like us. I have nothing. I have no money. I have no, I have no retirement. I have, but, but what I do have, I gave you, I have, I have a little bit of me. And he says, Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. And so the woman went around, started knocking on every house door. And she's like, look, look, hey, how you doing, Martha or Melissa or Jenny or Laquifa? I don't know. Like, can, 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 can I get a jar? Okay, just, girl, just here, just bring it. Okay, up. See, so she had to go to work. She had to go knock. She had to go ask. She had to go plead. She, listen, when you're desperate, when you have a need, you'll do whatever it takes. Dig a ditch. I'm going to go do that. That was the word from the Lord, from Elisha. Go and get as many jars. And look. And so she went around and asked all her neighbors for empty jars. Okay. He says, don't ask for a few either. See, so many of us, we ask so little from God. God's like, God's like ask me, what do you want? We're just asking for what we need for the moment. When God said, no, I want you to ask for more than enough. I want you to ask exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever hope, ask, or think for. We only ask just to get by where God's saying, come on, ask for more. Huh? Ask. Look, he says, don't ask for just a few. Why? Because he knows that, that there are so many Christians that live a life of few. We live few. God's saying, live more. And, and so then go inside and shut the door behind you and, and go to church with your sons and your daughters and get in the house of God. And he says, and pour oil. He says, start pouring oil. So did they bring me the oil? By any chance, did Jessica bring me the oil? Yeah, nobody, no, she didn't, didn't, she forgot. That's all right. She's okay, bring me that oil, girl. Hurry up, hurry up. Thank you so much. So then she goes ahead, and, and let's just pretend this is the jar, jar. So she's got the first jar that she had, right? And she just starts pouring it and pouring it, right? And she's pouring, and they all just start filling up, all of them, right? Every single one of those jars are filling up. And so she just kept doing this and doing this and just filling. Can you imagine what was happening? She's filling every single jar of oil from what she had. Elisha didn't go there and be like, okay, let me go bring the buckets, praise God. You know, like, come here, girl. Let No, it was just the word. So many of us, you want someone to do it for you. God's saying, well, you just take my word for it. We're looking, well, that doesn't add up. Well, Elisha, you know, is, is the donkey basket coming anytime soon with the oil? No, he said, go and shut yourself in your room. And I want you to grab that jar. And I want you to pour it out. Look. And so she, gets, she does that. And, and as each is filled, he said, put it, put it to one side. And she left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. And they brought the jars to her. And she kept pouring. Everybody say she kept pouring. Come on. God wants you to keep pouring. Don't stop. Keep pouring your heart out. But God's not answering me. Keep pouring. Just keep pouring your heart out. And look. And uh, la, 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 la. And when all the jars were what? She said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, mom, there's not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. Say with me. Then the oil stopped flowing say it again then the oil stopped flowing it's kind of like your spiritual walk then you stop flowing the oil, the oil stopped and look and then she went and she told the man of God and he said okay now go sell the oil and pay your debts You and your sons can live on what is what left. See, the woman was in what? Need. The woman was in need. But my question was, but what happened to the oil? 
okay, so she had all these jars and, and the oil just kept coming and coming and, and it didn't stop. It didn't stop until she's like, come on, boy, go get me another one. He's like, it's all done, mom. We're, we're, we're done. And so as I was reading this and just thinking, I'm like, you know what? God wasn't lacking oil. God was lacking vessels. And when God lacks vessels, he stops the pouring. In other words, when you're full of yourself, when you're full of pride, when you're full of arrogance, when you're full of jealousy, when you're full of anger, when you're full of disappointment, when you're full of complaining, God says, that's where I stop pouring. Because you're full of yourself. God says, I need you to come and I need you to come empty so that I can fill you. So that I can pour peace and joy and, and revelation and wisdom and insight. Let me tell you something. If you don't read the word like that, you're missing it. You're missing it. And so God doesn't lack any oil. God lacks vessels that are empty. So what do I do, Pastor? Empty yourself. Well, how do I do that? Humble yourself. Well, how do I do that? Well, I don't know. What do you, what's going on right now? Well, <laughs> let's not talk about it. Okay, well, then don't, you won't get filled. Maybe there's, you're, you're full of, 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 of unforgiveness. You just can't let it go. Ah, 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 I ain't letting that go. No. No, I'm not going to forgive him. I ain't forgiving her. Forget that noise. No. Okay. Well, you let me know when you need me so that I can then come and fill your peace, fill, your, fill you with healing. Huh? That's why we quench the Holy Spirit because we don't need him anymore. He's called the helper. He wants to help you. You know, it's so interesting. The prophet tells the woman, go get help. She knocks on every door. It symbolizes what we need today. You need the helper. Holy Spirit, help me to see this correctly. Anoint me with your oil. Huh? He is oil. We need the Holy Spirit back, guys. We need a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because when you get a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit, you start operating in God's revelation. See, now you're not just hearing sermons that are just so just like whatever, like, hey, love your neighbor. No. No, God, God's like, yeah, I love your neighbor, but I want to speak something in depth to your soul. I, I want to speak something that's that's so profound that nobody can explain it to you but me. You see, too many of us are running to teachers where God's saying, but I want you to, to know I'm your father. No, tell me what to do, pastor. No, God's saying, how about you come to me and tell me your need and let me father you. And that's by the Holy Spirit. I feel like tonight we're going to empty ourselves so that God can fill us. Is that okay? Worship team, come up here real quick. Come on, stand to your feet real fast. I'm going to leave you with this last verse. Look at this. It says in 2 Timothy 1.14, it says, guard the good deposit. Everybody say guard. guard. It says guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the what? Holy Spirit. Who what? Lives in you. He lives in us. Guard it, guard it. God is, God's doing some things in people's hearts tonight, I'm telling you. It, it's already started. It's awesome to see what God already has begun. But, but listen, he doesn't like oil. He likes vessels. And you know what? We are vessels. God wants to fill you tonight. He wants to fill you with the answer. He wants to fill you with, with the what's next. He wants to fill your life with meaning. He wants to fill your life with purpose.
If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.